Schreiber, and I'm delighted, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our special Easter celebration. It is a joy to have all of our members, our family, our friends, and guests here together today. If you are a guest or new to Unity, whether in our sanctuary or online at home, um, please know that we truly appreciate you, and we're glad that you're here today. Please join me in waving hello to our friends at home and welcome them. Your presence adds to our spiritual community and we do truly appreciate you. We are blessed today to have as our musicians the Joyful Noise Choir. <laughs> directed by Sheila Gautreau. Give Sheila a hand, yay Sheila. And you just experienced our great children's choir, led by uh, Steve and Marabai Banks. Please 
take this time now to turn your cell phones off and we may begin our service. In just a moment, I'm going to invite you to greet each other. Because we expect a full house, as you sit down, if you could please move towards the center of your rows, it would make it easier for those who arrive to sit on the ends and make it um, easier for them. We know Unity people love to greet everyone in the building. <laughs> because of our expanded service today, we ask that you take a moment to wish just those immediately next to you a happy Easter. <laughs> so please stand and wish each other a happy Easter. As we turn our attention to our service, I invite you to take that deep breath through your heart. Once again, breathe in that divine love through your heart and release. Please join me as we focus our intention for today's service. We do this by affirming our opening prayer. Please say it with me prayerfully and powerfully three times. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Take that deep into your heart and as we say it together again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God.
early on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. It was still dark. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the entrance. So she ran to Simon Peter and another disciple, the one Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb. Both of them were running. The other disciple ran faster than Peter. He reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in and saw the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived. He went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there. He also saw the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself. It was separate from the linen. The disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she cried, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels dressed in white. They were seated where Jesus' body had been. One of them was where Jesus' head had been laid, and the other sat where his feet had been placed. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said, Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him, then I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him. Then she cried out in the Aramaic language, Rabboni. Rabboni means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me. I have not yet returned to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. She said, I have seen the Lord and she told them that he had said these things to her. <sighs> Boy, you all look so dressed up. It must be a special day. <sighs> Take that deep breath. <sighs> Thank you, Susan, for that, to touch that wonderful story again. As we journey into our time of prayer and meditation. I want to start from that, from that story. And from that story, move into that beautiful place of stillness where we're able to touch it all at a greater, greater depth. And then from that place of stillness, we bring out and share that beautiful love and light that's there. So in this journey, I invite you to let, let the music be part of your guide to that center of your heart.
presence, infinite love. We take this journey in that place of prayer where we can step beyond time and space to touch this beautiful sacred moment so long ago and yet here unfolding within our midst. Imagine for a moment that you were there with Mary as she journeyed through to the tomb. Because you have made journeys like that. Journeys with your heart heavy. Experiencing loss and pain. And so you know what it must have been like upon her heart. And then to step into a world of confusion. To not understand what is happening. And then to turn around and ask where he is. Where have you taken him? And then to be called by name. To be called to awaken. to be called to see the truth of what is before us. I invite you now to let that call be your name. To awaken and see what we thought was death is life. What we thought was loss is gain. What we thought was tragedy is filled with beauty by the presence of this divine love. <clears throat> to awaken to see that there is this presence, whether for you that is Jesus or this radiant light and love in whatever form touches your heart and depth. As it calls to you, awaken. See the truth that is here. This all-loving goodness that is God. And let that presence fill your heart. What joy she must have felt. What love, what awe. And as that pure, radiant joy of divine love fills you, it makes it so easy to let go of everything else and Simply rest for a moment in that beautiful place of peace as we take this journey into silence.
for a moment to just rest at one with this divine love. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Father God, infinite love. We now invite that which we touched in the feelings of joy and love. That in which we rested in this place of silence to now flow forth from our hearts. flow forth like sunshine in the morning as it brings light to everything it touches. And so this beautiful love that you are in and through and as us, we send it out to bless all that we love across this community to respond to every prayer request. We send it out to bless all peoples, to join with those prayers and that light that is celebrated all over the globe as our prayers join with others no matter what the path. For our prayers are one. And this love is one. And it enfolds our world. It brings blessing and healing to all people. It brings blessing and healing to the earth. And it brings us into that awakening of that divine love in each heart. For in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. It is so in the joy of that infinite presence. Amen.
<laughs> oh, I love Easter. Don't you love Easter? First of all, Easter bunnies. I mean, how want every I got to check. Everybody Easter bunny showed up. Things are okay in, in that world. Okay, good. Good. That's a part of Easter and and uh, you know, all the celebration of spring and new things and and then we get into that resurrection thing. Um, now, I know that there are some of you here that have that beautiful faith that you heard that story and you just went, of course, can God, God can do anything. Of course, that's the way it was. And my guess is there are a number of you sitting here that are a little skeptical, that go, well, maybe it was, and maybe it wasn't. Now, it's okay. I mean, I love skeptics, okay. You keep asking the good questions, so keep it up, keep it up. But then there's, there's another group of people here who are carrying a problem through their lives. And that is the need to know, how'd that work? Okay, any of you, how, how folks, any of you that got to know how it works? Because that's, uh, I'm, I'm afraid I've, it's an affliction that I have had for many years. And particularly when it gets to the Easter thing. Okay, I mean, that's, that's not your normal everyday experience. So how did it work? Now, I've, I did share with you a number of Easter's ago my memories from that time, so I don't have a big problem with it. Something happened there. But how do you do that? Now, there, there's a reason why that's, that's kind of important to me, and that's unity has this perception of Jesus. Now, we, we buy into the, okay, Son of God, right, it's that next line that we keep noticing folks forgetting. And so are you. So we, we look, at it, look at Jesus as, the, as sort of the elder brother, the one that, okay, he, he, he went through it first and, you know, kind of showed us how to do it. You know, you, that learning how to pitch the ball until he helps you get it until you finally get it right. Okay. So he's doing that for us with the spiritual thing. So whatever he did, my perception is that was the why to show us the amazing power of your spiritual self and so I want to know how that happened now there's, there's a part of it where, where if you look, every time he, he keeps showing what the spiritual self can do. Okay, so he keeps showing, here's, here's something that happens. Here's somebody that's ill. You know, they're, they're lame and okay, they, they're able to, to walk. And that he keeps explaining it, well, it was their faith that did it. Okay, and then there's not enough to eat, and so there's more than enough to eat. And so he, he shows that change again and again as he demonstrates for us, what we, this huge, amazing potential that is our spiritual self. But if you'll notice, it wouldn't be easy to figure out that everybody's going to look at that and say, well, that's him doing it to them. And I don't think that's what he was showing. Okay? I think it was the power that we have within ourselves. And so finally, he gets a chance to do that because there's no one doing it to him. Just him. Only one hanging out in that tomb. How'd he do it? Well, I, I had, a, had a hint come along, and I'd like to share it with you. Uh, it, it, it was an amazing experience that happened to a, to a woman 
The woman's name is uh, Anita uh, Morgani. And, and Anita, uh, she really lived her life in, in Hong Kong. She, she was from India. Her, her family was from India, and they, and they were devout Hindus. But they lived uh, her, her life in, in Hong Kong. So that's where she was raised. So from this background of, uh, of India and, and Hinduism, she finds herself in a culture where, you know, very, very rich in the, in the Chinese uh, traditions and, and religious practices. And she spent some time at a Catholic school, so she got some of Christianity and some of that as well. So this uh, Anita, as she goes through her life, begins to make the changes to kind of explore and find things for herself. And she gets married, has a wonderful marriage. She chooses to be a career person and develops a very meaningful career for herself. Then she gets cancer. And she looks at the cancer experience and the doctors tell her about chemotherapy and all that sort of thing and she says, no, I don't want that. I don't want you putting that poison in me. So she decides to explore alternative medicines, which she does with tremendous commitment. I mean, over the next four years, I mean, she goes to India and works with the great masters and healers, and she, she goes through all sorts of learning and working with this, all this huge variety of, of amazing uh, healing skill and knowledge. And at the end of four years, her body is so weak from the cancer that she can't get around without a wheelchair. It has continued to deteriorate until one night her husband has to take her into the, the hospital because she's passed into a coma. Now, when she enters the hospital, the oncologist, when she, when she looks at her, is really in a state of shock. And she explains to her husband, her husband's name is Danny, and she says to him that his wife's heart is beating, but she is no longer there. Her organs have almost completely shut down. That's why she's in the coma. And she has hours to live. She will not make it through the night. So very, very difficult situation for her husband. Uh, her mother comes and joins them there. Her father is trying, or not her father, her uh, brother is, is on a plane trying to get to be with his sister before her transition. In this experience, Anita wakes up. Now, she sees her family around her. And she wants to tell them, I'm, I'm not hurting, I'm OK. But she can't because she doesn't have any use of her body. Her body is still in the coma. So she begins to not only be aware of what's going on there, but in addition, she begins to be aware that she's not in pain. That she feels good, that she's OK. She wants to tell them, and as she she tries to do that. She finds the experience of her awareness expanding. Let me share her experience with you in her words. It was as though I'd awakened. My soul was finally realizing its true magnificence. Whoa. My soul was finally realizing its true magnificence. And in doing so, it was expanding beyond my body in this physical world. It extended further and further outward until it encompassed not only this existence, but continued to expand into another realm that was beyond this time and space, and at the same time included it. Love, joy ecstasy and awe 
poured into me, through me, and engulfed me. I was swallowed up and enveloped in more love than I ever knew existed. The feeling of complete, pure, unconditional love was unlike anything I'd known before, unqualified and non-judgmental. It was totally non-discriminating, as if it didn't have to, I didn't have to do anything to deserve it, nor did I need to prove myself to earn it. She goes on to describe this awakening that she was one with this presence, this love, this power, this knowledge that totally and completely accepted her. And she kept describing her experience of herself as magnificent. Well, I think she made that movement into her spiritual self. Now, if that's what it means, to become aware of our spiritual self. That means your being is magnificent. Okay? You are magnificent. You are magnificent. Now, I didn't say we aren't pretty skilled at covering up some of that sometimes pretty well. But that's what you are. I am magnificent. Own it with me. I am magnificent. I am magnificent. I am magnificent. Yes, you are. To make that movement and discover that about herself. And then, then as she did, as she experienced this, and with this came a, a tremendous amount of understanding of, of her life and what this was she was experiencing. One of, one of my favorite uh, lines in, in there is where she just says that her experience was that God wasn't a being, but a state of being. And she had entered into that. That oneness, that oneness with all that is. Uh, the... Uh, choir just sang with us a, a moment ago that, that desire that we sometimes feel that, you know, I want to be holy like Jesus. You are. Now understand, that's a real desire. That we want to bring forth that which we really are. We want to live it. We want to, we want to touch life. We want to touch people around. And Jesus is, is a symbol, a, a picture, a part of that experience. But you are not because of what you do. But you are because you are. You are magnificent. Now, she had a choice to make. Did she go on, leave the body? She understood that was just fine. She was free to do that, and it would be in order. She also understood that if she did that, her husband would probably join her in that leaving in, in several years, and that was fine. And yet there was, she became aware that there was a further purpose that could be served by returning, by re-energizing that body. And, and this, this is what she acknowledges in in making that decision to return. I discovered that since I'd realized who I really was and understood the magnificence of my true self, you get the magnificence? <laughs> magnificent? Okay. Understood the magnificence of my true self. If I chose to go back to life, my body would heal rapidly, not in months or weeks, but in days. 
I knew that the doctors wouldn't be able to find a trace of cancer if I chose to go back into my body. How can that be? I was astounded by this revelation and wanted to understand why. Now, here's, here's the bad news. All you wise people, you get there and you still got it. You still want to know why, okay? <laughs> the difference is, it's a little easier to get the answer. I wanted to know why. It was then that I understood that my body was only a reflection of my internal state. My body was a reflection of my internal state. If my inner self was aware of its greatness and connection with all that is, my body would soon reflect that and heal properly. Okay, I wonder if that's what happened with Jesus. If releasing that third dimensional experience through the death of the body and returning to the full awareness of his magnificence, his oneness with it all. If in that love to serve, taking him back in, so that that body would have to reflect the consciousness of oneness that he really had, that fullness, that life. Now, I'm just guessing. But my guess is that if he wanted it to happen from that place of knowing all power, all wisdom, all love, that it would happen. Anita woke up after having been in the coma for 24 hours. Suddenly she was alert, able to see. She was able to recognize her husband and uh, her mother, her brother was there by then. And she was also able to recognize the doctor that she'd never met before and tell him what he'd been doing and saying out in the hall. <laughs> Within four days, her body, which had been filled with cancerous tumors, was free of cancer. Now, for those of you in the medical profession, you know that just means you test more. It doesn't mean you accept that. <laughs> Okay, so they did that for, for quite a while because they were convinced it had to be there someplace, but of course, it wasn't. After five weeks, she walked out of the hospital that she had entered almost dead, cancer-free, ready to step into a very full and meaningful life. That's resurrection to me. Okay. And nobody did it to her. She did it by connecting with who she really was. And when we want to live our lives at the fullest, we connect with who we really are. And who you are is absolutely magnificent. Okay. Let's say it again. I am magnificent. I am magnificent. I am magnificent. Am magnificent. You got that right. <laughs> Happy Easter.
service in the sanctuary and on the patio and they will be praying with you 
our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. You're also invited to place a prayer request in our prayer box by the front door or in the book center or by placing a prayer at our, at, on our website at the prayer request button. We will be praying with you throughout the week. It's time now for our prosperity celebration. I invite you to take your tithes and your love offerings in your hand <clears throat> and repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. prayer protection, I just want to give a thank you to these gorgeous voices and all the talent and yeah, and the hidden talent hiding behind, up there in the mothership and behind cameras and thank you all.
Well, let's take hands and share together our prayer of protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And our peace song. peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun and happy Easter. Woo!